welcome everyone. I'm glad you're able to join us today. Uh, I have a special treat for you. I have uh, esteemed author, and I am also happy to say a good friend of mine, uh, James Braha, who's uh, an excellent Vedic astrologer, very influential in the West. Uh, he's written five books, and today we're going to talk about the completely expanded and re-released uh, version of his ancient Hindu astrology for the modern Western astrologer. So thank you so much, James, for being on our channel today. Well, hey, I have been, I have to tell you, <laughs> in March and April, I was doing YouTube saying, I'm, I'm revising the book. It should be done in about three or four weeks. This went on for months, <laughs> months. I did not, this is the book, by the way, it's, 560 pages so that that's more than what it was before right the original was 360 360 so you've got you've got over 200 pages so yeah. let's let's jump a little bit and talk about um you know what prompted you to uh, to revise and expand the book because it's, it's a very influential book i mean a lot of astrologers that i've talked to that have gotten into vedic astrology or have transitioned from the western astrological world into vedic have they've always quoted this book to me. And uh, so when, you know, when I was right. able to get a copy, I, I found that, you know, it's, it's actually really well written and there's a lot of really good examples. So can you talk a little bit more about what prompted you? Yeah. So I have, you know, me, when I start talking, <laughs> I have a lot to say. Okay. That's fine. So, so let me, let me just say this, that when I got into astrology in the late seventies, <laughs> I'm ancient when I got into astrology in the late seventies, the best book is still, honestly, in my opinion, it's still the best Western astrology reference book. It was by Isabel Hickey. And I remember reading this book and I said, how on earth does this woman know this amount of information? And so much of it was experiential. She got it from experience, right? Mm -hmm. Well, she was about 70 at the time, which is, I'm, I'll be 69 next week, this week, Thursday. Um, so she had been in the field for 30 or 40 years. So that's how she had a book that was filled with not theoretical, but experiential material. And I remember saying, this is fantastic. And I'd seen other books, but there was nothing like this one. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to memorize this book. I'm going to read this book so many times that I know it inside and out, and then I'll be the greatest astrologer. And it's just impossible. You can't do it. You can't do it. You try to do it, but you can't do it. So when I wrote the first book, I was 33, 34, or something like that. And I had analyzed maybe in Hindu, maybe three, you know, a few hundred, two, three hundred. I'd only been in Hindu astrology for a couple of years. So, you know, but I want, I knew how the system worked and I wanted to spread it to all the Western astrologers so that they could use both systems. And the interesting thing was, first of all, I wanted to keep it very, very traditional. I didn't want to add anything or, you know, I just wanted to do it the way they had always done it, which, which carried a lot of problems that I didn't realize because a lot of the stuff doesn't work. Or a lot of the stuff is overly negative, all sorts of stuff. Anyway, the it's a reference book, and it's got all the planets and houses, which is a lot. It's a hundred. It's twelve houses and nine planets. It's a massive undertaking. As I was redoing this, trying to go over every planet and house, take out the stuff I didn't didn't like, and add the stuff that I know from experience, it was it really it was near impossible to do 109 planets and houses plus every time the planets fallen or exalted what happens then and i wondered how the hell did i do this when i was 35 you know i don't remember it being as laborious and tedious and you know, i had more <laughs> in a certain way i had more patience at 35 but i was following the traditional stuff not i wasn't having to search my own brain so much from my experience but the the other fascinating point is that when I did the horoscopes of famous individuals, Richard Nixon, Marilyn Monroe, Jackie Kennedy, I, I, 10 or 15 charts, I did not have the kind of experience that I have after 35 years. 
So I'm trying to force the horoscopes, you know, okay, this guy has this problem and here's why. But the problem is I didn't have 30 years of experience. So I was, you know, like trying to, <laughs> you know, fit squares into whole puzzles. You know, it, it was like that. The book was fine. People loved it. In fact, I remember going to Fairfield, Iowa, where all the meditators were because they, they wanted to know about Jyotish. And when I got there, they all loved my book. And they said, oh, this book was channeled. You channeled this book. And I said, what on earth are they talking about? I remember how hard it was, how I concentrated and studied. And they're saying I just you know, conjured it from, from, from that. <laughs> anyway, um, so as time went on, as time went on, I started to see the problems. You know, for one thing, the Hindu Vedic books, they ignore the obvious. Like when they do planets in the, if, if, if you read books on written by Indian authors, if a planet's in the eighth house or the 12th house, it is ruined. The world is going to come to an end. You're going to die early. I mean, it's just horrible, right? right? They never, any of the books that I had up until 1984, I can tell you, they never said, oh, this planet in the eighth house is going to get is going to make the person really sexy. It's going to give them lots of money from pensions. It's going to make them great in astrology. No, the planets in the eighth house, life is a disaster. I appreciate that because I do have a lot of eighth house energy myself. So I take that as a backhanded compliment. Thank you. So over the years, I kept getting clients. They're interested in astrology, so they have eighth house planets. So they come to me and they're scared silly because they have these eighth house planets that are terrible. So I was, so when I started revising the books, what happened was about three or four years, well, several, five or six years ago, I knew I had to update my books for eBooks. So I started that two years ago, two and a half years ago. And I knew that the one book that needed massive revision was ancient Hindu. I didn't know it would take me a year. I didn't know it'd be 200 pages extra. I had no idea. It's just every time I would get to a page, I'd say, oh, I, this, I, I can do this much better now. And it just kept growing and growing and growing. I even say in the acknowledgements, after about eight or seven, eight months, the frustration of how long, I just couldn't get to an end of, of it. And my wife, Vashti, she would say, but James, James, it's so important. The students are going to love it. And then I would be okay for a week. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I was chomping at the bit to get to the planets and the houses just to get rid of the negativity of all these eighth and sixth, eighth, and twelfth house planets. There's also things like the Marakas. Mm -hmm. So in the original book, I said the Marakas, when you're in a Maraka period, a person may die in a Maraka period, but don't worry about it because it's not a, you know, Marika periods happen often. Over the years, I mean, to this day, last week, somebody said, hey, I'm coming to a Marika period. It's going to kill me. I, I can't tell you. I, I have said at least to 50 clients, maybe 100 over the years, if I could go back and rewrite ancient Hindu, I would just leave Marikas out. So this time, I couldn't leave Marikas out because they're all worried silly because they, they've read about them forever. So I say in there three times, I say Marika periods happen every two or three years. So you, you can't worry about them like they're going to kill you. Repeat. I said, I bolded it. I repeated it. They, if they ever come back to me with that one, they're going to be in trouble. The other, the, uh, you know, I used to have a guru in the 70s when I was pursuing enlightenment. And he used to say the teacher learns more than the student. When it got to the, when it got near the end of this book, mm -hmm. I came to the realization, really a real, for me, it's an important realization that every astrologer has to find their own way. Now, the reason, the reason for this is because if you read my books, particularly this one, because it's written out. My last book, The Art and Practice, you can see it in the background, that was written in 2000. It's 20 years later. I've got more and more experience. Every time I write a book or, or do this revised edition, I'm telling you how it works. Forget the theory, forget the, you know, all the different varied techniques. I'm telling you 
like my, my like my teacher used to say to me he would tell me something once in a while and i would argue it this was padia in 84 on my second journey i'd say wait a minute and he'd go you take it from me i have marked this when he said that conversation's over <laughs> he know no because he's seen it work he knows it and so with this book with with most of my books uh, the recent ones, not the original ancient Hindu, because that was so long ago, but in the art and practice, I'm telling you what actually works in my experience. And I'm saying, if you just do it this way, this will be the right way, et cetera, et cetera. This book, the revised edition of the ancient Hindu astrology is so filled with that kind of information because I'm trying to explain what works and techniques that don't work. The ones I don't like, Vargo Tama doesn't work for me at all. The Navamsha, the way they talk about it doesn't work for me at all. I get the divisional charts to work, but not using them as whole charts. I use the seventh house of the Navamsha, that's it. Mm -hmm. The 10th house of the Dasamsha, that's it. And I get good results. So in my books, I'm and when I teach, I'm trying to teach people this is the way, right? And after a year of updating this book, it finally becomes clear. I can tell you what works for me <clears throat> and you can use what works for you, but everybody must find their own way because the process, my process of explaining what works and what doesn't work, it never ends. It just never ends. Right. And when I was doing the when I was doing planets in, in, in houses, you know, most, first of all, it's like I said, it's 109 planets in houses, plus when they're fallen, plus when they're exalted. And in this version, in this version, this is where the book becomes, this is something, I, I gotta tell you, I didn't do this for money. <laughs> I didn't even do it for modern day astrologers. It's that I'm, I'm in my late 60s. I want to know that when I leave this planet, there is a book that is really, really, really a good reference text. Okay. So I went over 109 planets and houses and I tried to insert, I mean, I did insert anything that I knew from experience. For example, if I've noticed, I have marked this, if Mars is in the seventh house, a person, let's say it's a lady named Jane, she has Mars in the seventh house. Mm -hmm. She's likely, if she's married, she's likely to be present when her husband dies, simply because, simply because of Mars in the seventh house. In fact, when I was writing the, when I was doing the famous horoscopes and I got to Jackie Kennedy, there was nothing in there showing that she would have a husband die right in front of her. However, her birth time is not perfect. When you go to get birth data, the best place for birth data online is called the Lois Rodden, R-O-D-D-E-N, Lois Rodden database, or it's also called Astrodynst, Astro, D-I-E-N-S-T or something like that. Anyway, Jackie Kennedy's birth data is from memory. So it's not double A, she has double A, A, B, C, D, birth data. So it's A, it's not double A, it's from memory. It's 230. You back that up to 220. You back it up 10 minutes, which if it's from memory could easily be 215 to you back it up. Suddenly Jackie Kennedy's Navamsha has Mars in the seventh, the fallen sun in the seventh, the seventh house ruler Venus fallen in Virgo in the Navamsha. Now this makes sense, but Things like the stuff I've seen from experience. My brother, when his wife died, she died in his arms. He has Mars in the seventh house. These are things I find from experience. Another one is when Saturn's in the fourth house, the person has heart problems. It took me 20 or 30 years. I suddenly realized everybody, not everybody, but astrology is never absolute, but people with Saturn in the fourth house, they have heart problems, they're depressed. Right. but they also have a big heart. They have heart problems <clears throat> and they have physical heart problems. They have depression in the heart, but other people talk about them like they're so big hearted. 
Bruce Springsteen, depressed as depression. It's not mental depression from the horoscope, it's Saturn in the fourth. When this guy plays a concert, he's all heart. So these are, these are subtleties. They're things that I've learned, I've marked them. Okay, uh, uh, Saturn in the third house. Nobody talked about relatives in the Hindu scriptures, but from experience, you find people that have Saturn in the third house, they have trouble with their relatives, not just their siblings, with relatives in general. Anyway, there's a lot of that stuff in the book, but nobody, nobody can actually, from experience, tell you what 109 planets are going to do in the houses. It's too vast a job. Where I had trouble was the 12th house planets. Hmm. And I would email. I've, I've had people with, with uh, very intense 12th houses where they're very sexual, people with very intense 12th houses where they're not sexual at all, people with very intense 12th houses where they are very committed to enlightenment and others where they're not. And I'm not just saying, oh, there's three planets there, so they must be. No, I'm talking about getting into the specifics. Which planet is there? What does it rule? And I'm telling you, those for me are the difficult ones. I even emailed other astrologers about some of these. What do you think of Saturn in the 12th? What do you th and I was never satisfied. It's just, it's, it's a, it now there will be some people that know those placements, I'm sure. Nobody knows them all. But the, the best, one of the best features of this, the two features of this book that are the best, one is that there is now, there's 14 horoscopes, including Donald Trump, that are so detailed and so intricate. And with Lyndon Johnson and John Lennon, I had to rectify the ascendance. Mm -hmm. So when you read this, you will see how a chart is rectified. These people had bad ninth houses. Lyndon Johnson had a terrible ninth house using the birth data that was used in the 1980s. But his ninth house is so bad, when people have a bad ninth house, they don't get higher knowledge. So you have, so their birth time gets messed up. John Lennon, it wasn't his ninth house that was so bad. It was bad, but not so bad, but it was his Jupiter that was a total wreck. When people have a, a bad ninth or a, a bad Jupiter, their birth data gets messed up because they're not gonna get higher knowledge. In any case, I had to, so I had to look at Lyndon Johnson's chart and it's crystal clear that it's the Cancer Ascendant, not the Leo, because he's got four younger siblings. And you look at the, 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 the uh, you look at the Leo Ascendant, there's no younger siblings, maybe one or two if you wanna like really exaggerate, but the other one has four crystal clear, and I use other things too. So the, the section on famous horoscopes is really detailed and it's really, really useful. And it's way easier to do this now because I used to have to go to the library to get information on these people. <laughs> now I just click on Wikipedia. It tells me when they did this and when they did, when they did that. Okay. But the other part of this book that makes it where you, you actually have to own it is that in this version of it, it tells you what to do if the planet is fallen. It tells you which gemstone to wear like if, if, if Venus has fallen, then I say the person should get a white, a two carat high quality diamond or white sapphire. They should put pictures of the goddess Lakshmi around the house. They should do mantras and yagas for Venus, stuff like that. Also, you know, it, it'll say whenever Jupiter, it, like it'll just be talking about the planets and the houses. But when I get to Jupiter, if Jupiter's in this house and Jupiter's exalted, then I'll say, at the bottom, whenever Jupiter is exalted, the person is open-minded. They're not arrogant. Whenever Mars is exalted, the person has great control over their temper and their sexual energy. This is completely separate from Mars in this house, Mars exalted, Mars and Mars has fallen. And then there's a warning for every fallen planet, you know, it says it's how bad it is. It'll say, please understand that you have to look at the entire horoscope. Many of these things will not come to pass. I mean, it's just, it's, it's very, very, like when you're reading through the planets and houses, if you're actually analyzing somebody's horoscope, it's telling you what to do 
to help them. It also, with all the planets in the first house, it'll say, uh, you know, Mercury in the first house, everything that that is. And then it'll go into Ayurveda. It'll say Mercury in the first house, the person is going to be, have a vata, mental, airy, physical condition. They need to eat, uh, uh, you know, certain foods. They should not eat cold foods. They should eat warm soups and they should avoid this and avoid that. And if the person is kapha, if they have the moon or Jupiter in the first house, they have a kapha constitution. So they are allowed to have ca caffeine and alcohol. So just as a reference text, if somebody is just beginning in this field or if they're not, it's, it's really, I, you know, the funny thing about this is for months I've complained to my wife that I say, I don't know, I'm working for a year on this book. Is it any different than the other book? <laughs> because it feels like it's the same to me, but believe me, it is, it is way better. Well, I, you know, I think that's a really interesting point. And, you know, personally, I, I would think that when you originally wrote the book, it was uh, 1986, I think it was. It was I wrote it in 85. It came out in 86. 86, yeah. So I would imagine that, you know, there wasn't a very large Vedic astrology community at all. Very like large. <laughs> there was nothing. <laughs> right. And then, you know, uh, over the years, things have sort of exploded. And, and now, you know, there's a whole new generation of Vedic astrologers that are coming onto the scene. We're having right. more conferences. I know... Right. Uh, Dennis has his conference every year and well, everywhere there's conferences popping up. Uh, people are getting more and more um, interested in Vedic astrology. And so, um, you know, when, when, when a new astrologer picks up this text, I think there's a lot for them to, to appreciate that you've done. And especially considering the fact that you did it at a time where originally where, you know, there was nothing else available almost. And now you have, this, you know, brand new, uh, you know, young uh, novice astrologers that are picking up this book for the first time. And as you said, it will, this book will become like a legacy for you. Um, now that you, it's been coupled with over 30 years of, of astrological experience. Right. Um, is there anything in particular, I mean, other than what you've already spoken about, um, you know, with, with the planets and, and, and houses and, and, you know, nothing being absolute in Vedic astrology, but is there anything particular for like the new astrologers, the new crop that's sort of coming out that what you'd hope for them to gain from reading this book? I'm, I'm not sure what you mean. I mean, it's just more accurate. It is right. way more accurate for them. And, it, 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 and, it, and I talk about the techniques that, that they say that they work, but they don't, they don't really work. You know, there's a lot of, there's, there's a certain amount of that in there. Um, but it's just, it's, if they're doing a horoscope for somebody, there's so much, when they read the planets in the houses, there's going to be good material for them to actually impart to the, you know, to the other person. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff has been cleaned up, you know, there's just, there's just things that, that, that I was parroting what, what the texts say or what the books say, but, but it, it's, it, it just has a lot more information that is more uh, experiential you know I've seen it work this way like like if a person is using the planets and houses assuming that they understand when a planet's afflicted or not afflicted there's you know they can read this to people and a good amount of it is going to be accurate they're going to say yeah that's 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 how it is for me it's not every it's not everyone I mean it's difficult like I say a hundred and nine of those things is certainly difficult, but um, uh, it's it's um, it's more accurate and uh, and it's more subtle. It's more powerful. And the planets and how uh, the uh, the uh, you know famous horoscopes they are so different than it was before. I mean, <laughs> they're so. They're so comprehensive. And the thing about the, about, about the famous horoscopes is, the thing about the two books is that the original book taught you how to use the system. This book, if you read the famous horoscope descriptions, and you have to read it five or 10 times, you read it over and over, you will see, you will learn actually how to practice. 
When I wrote that book, The Art and Practice of Ancient Hindu Astrology in 2000, people emailed me and they said, finally, I can practice this because they saw how you could put it together. This is 20 years later. Putting it together is, is way better. You know, um, I read a book on, on Jimmy Carter, uh, I don't know, a year ago or something. It was a great book. It's called uh, An Unfinished Life. And so, so I had a lot of information about Carter and he was one of the horoscopes in the book originally. And, you know, I talk about how the very first thing I say is the key to this horoscope, the key to Jimmy Car Carter's horoscope is Mars and Saturn. And those are the kind of things that you don't get elsewhere. You know, the, the, this, you've got to understand these two planets and then you'll get it. Saturn, because he's a, he was humble, he is humble, he is responsible, trying to do the right thing all the time, but he's also very Marsy. Most presidents have Mars conjunct Mercury, Mars conjunct the moon, Mars conjunct the sun. Presidents have very strong Mars. He has Venus opposite Mars, Venus opposite Mars. That's a rare aspect. Venus and Mars aren't opposite each. I think they're not opposite each other that often. I come across it very rarely, but, but I had a girlfriend, not for long, that had Venus opposite Mars. And one day we were in the car, we were in the car and, and she wanted to turn and the other cars weren't letting her. And she just, she just forced her way in there. I was like peeing in my pants. It seemed so dangerous. And she goes, that's my Mars. That's my Mars. <laughs> so, so Jimmy Carter has this Mars where he was, people that had the, his competition, people that had to fight with him or wanted something else, they saw Jimmy Carter that you and I don't see. That, you know, we only see the Saturnian part of him, but he, he had a nasty streak. I, I told this in, in, in another interview that um, he, he was, he's like the only president that I've ever known to be opposed by his own party. He did not treat his own party very well and, and they didn't like him for it. And that's why, and uh, uh, one of the Kennedy, Ted Kennedy ran against him in the primaries after Carter was already president, really hurt, really hurt him. But the story for this Mars opposite Venus that I, that I always tell, and, and it's not just the story, it's when he needed to get something done. I mean, that's how he got to the presidency. He was aggressive. But, but the story was that when he lost the election to Reagan, he lost the election maybe at seven or eight o'clock at night or something like that, or nine o'clock at night. But the polls were still open in California out West, right? So he was gonna give his concession speech and Tip O'Neill and the other Democrats, they said, wait, don't, don't, don't give your concession speech. We have senators who are, in tight races out west, if you if you if if you say I give I, I I lose, they don't go to the polls to vote for the president. Then they don't vote for the senators. He didn't care. He said, "No, I don't care." But and Tip O'Neill said, "You know," he said to to Carter's right hand man, he said, "You know, you guys came in like a bunch of jerks, and you're leaving like a bunch of jerks." But anyway, <laughs> it's just so that's the kind of thing that when you see these planet the famous horoscope descriptions. There's, there's, there, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> when the first book came out, so I don't know if you can see this or not. This is how big the new one is. This is how big the other is. They're, they're, it's just way bigger. But anyway. 200 pages really do make a difference. Yeah. yeah. But, but I remember that, that there was some review or something. It was some Indian guy and he said, this is a really great book and blah, 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 blah. And he said, and there, and there's some, there's some analysis of famous horoscopes and he used the word threadbare. And I was like, Thre threadbare, what does he mean threadbare? <laughs> and I, and you know, I, I have so many, I have so many letters and, 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 and accolades and this and that, but I only remember the bad stuff. So I always remember. <laughs> He complained about my threadbare analysis of horoscopes, you know, and I kind of wondered what he meant because I did I didn't have 35 years of experience. So the famous horoscopes, it's the same 
it's like 14 horoscopes. I got rid of a couple. I got rid of John Glenn and Werner Earhart. Nobody knows who they are. But I added Donald Trump. There's, there's 14 horoscope analysis, but it's, it's doubled or tripled in size, the, 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 the analysis. So yeah. it's, um, yeah. That's, that's great. I mean, the, the important thing is that, you know, the readers are going to walk away with, with an actual experiential hands-on analysis of these horoscopes. Yeah, they will. And it's They will. But they need to read it, that section over and over if they really want to learn. By the way, uh, the place to get these, both the art and practice and this one in a hard copy is Amazon. Okay. Now, the art and practice is also on ebook. The ancient Hindu is not on ebook and won't be on ebook for a good while because you can only sell an Amazon ebook for $10. You just, the way they make, the way they force you to price it. I'm not going to sell a book that I worked a year on and it's 560 pages for 10 bucks. I'm not going to do it. Maybe a few years from now. Yeah, sure. Well, that's, I mean, what I'm planning on doing is putting a, um, a link to purchase the book on uh, the link description. Oh, that'd be below. great. Right. And, uh, and people can definitely get a hand, uh, uh, you know, they get their copy there. Yeah. Um, listen, James, it, you know, I, I really enjoy talking to, I enjoy listening to all of your uh, experiences and, and, you know, as a as a relative newcomer to the world of astrology, I think there's so much to be gained from from your wisdom and insight. And I thank you for coming on my channel today. And uh, I also thank you for all of your hard work. Uh, you know, because this obviously... I have to I have to thank you and tell your readers that um, when I wrote the Art and Practice of Ancient Hindu Astrology, which is a 450 page book or something like that, right. Um, I read over it a million times. It's a, it's a dialogue text with a student. The student read over it a hundred times. We found mistakes here and there. And then I had my editor and proofreader read it a couple times and I thought I was done. And a couple of years after it was over, I got an email from somebody and he loved my book. He was a great fan. And he said, I wrote down all the errors I found. I couldn't believe the amount of typos that were in there. Flash forward 30 years, an, an, an Indian publisher wants to publish that book in India. And we start talking about it. And I say, oh, look, you have the original version. I got to tell you, there's a lot of typos. He said, yeah, I, I saw them. I didn't want to mention it, but I saw them. And he said, listen, how many proofreaders did you have? I said, I said one, plus me and my student. He said, you need four. He said, you need four proofreaders. Anyway, so I contacted you and Dennis Boyle and George Angelino to read through that section on famous horoscopes for any kind of errors. And so I wanted to thank you for, for that help. That was really valuable to me. Um, in fact, you know, when you do an astrology book, you say, who am I gonna get to do this? Who is gonna want to read through looking for mistakes? You know, and you, all three of you were like, oh, give it to me, give it to me. Yes, I was very, very, that was very fortunate. Well, it, it, it was uh, it was an honor and I would do it again in a heartbeat because, uh, you know, in reading those horoscopes, I did manage to learn a lot about, uh, you know, the strength and prosperity of different houses and why houses suffer, right. um, whether they're occupied by malefics or through malefic aspects. Um, and I, I would urge anybody who's even remotely curious to pick up this book and, and say that they won't be disappointed. They, there, there is something for uh, everyone. And as you said, you know, there's a lot of astrology texts out there, translations of uh, some of the ancient texts as well, where people didn't quite necessarily get to the, to the guts of it. And a lot of it is spoken through hyperbole as well. Like if you get this combination, you will die a painful death. And people get really scared. They learn a little bit of the astrology and they see yeah. that combination and they freak out. Um, but what you do is you bring uh, a practical approach to it. And, uh, but my original book had a, a fair amount of that crap because I was sticking to what these people taught me. You know, I, was, I didn't want to change it. Yeah. <laughs> Another I, thing, let me, just, let me just say one other thing that's in this book. Sure. One of the things that I find is that, you know, 
Jyotish is so expansive. And this is part of why I say you have to find your own way. It's too expansive to ever follow one teacher because there's too many things. So like in this book, I say, look, when you read the books, it's going to say to read the natal chart. Read the Navamsha as if it's a natal chart, especially in the second half of life and blah, blah, blah. Read the Chandra Lugna chart, the chart from the position of the moon. Read the Bhava chart. I'm not going to mention the others. There's others too. I'm, there's a Ruta Lugna and this Lugna. I'm not going to mention those. These four are very basic. If you have four charts, you can find whatever you want. You can find whatever you want if you got four charts. Get rid of the get rid of the Navamsha as a regular chart. It's a marriage chart. I have not find found Chandra Lugna to be. I have found Chandra Lugna to be fantastic when a planet is seven houses from the moon. It's like a clock. Mars in the seventh, they're going to be fighting. Mercury in the seventh, the partner's going to be mercurial. But the but the Chandra Lugna chart as a whole, they, they don't they don't. So that's the kind of thing that's in this book. It's practical, but because there are so many different techniques, that's the reason. Take my advice. I'm telling you, when I do chart readings, when I'm done, people go, my God, that was, wow, that was really accurate. So that's what I try to teach people. But at the same time, I still have to say, you better find your own, take what I have, but you're going to have to find your own way because there's all these other techniques out there. And there's these teachers that have studied with with Jyotish scholars for 10 years. <laughs> they must be teaching something. That's not what I do. I just tell you how to work the chart, you know, simply, which is what my teacher did for me. That's what Padia did. Well, that's fantastic. James, thank you again You're so welcome. much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. And, you know, if anyone has any questions or comments or concerns, they can put them in, in um, the comment section below and I'm happy. Or they can also email me. I'm at jamesbraha at gmail.com. Great. And okay. my website's jamesbraha.com. Yeah. And I'll post those as well too, just in case people do want to get in touch with you. Okay. So thank you so much and okay. take care. And thanks everyone for watching today. Take care. Bye-bye.